Are you struggling to speak, understand, and be understood in French? It could be because you're expecting it to be the same as written French, when in reality, spoken French is almost a completely different language. This is something I talk about a lot on my channel, but is very difficult to understand until you actually see it, or in this case, hear it. So why don't we look at some examples together so that you can fast track your French fluency. C'est parti! We don't use the same words in written French and in everyday spoken French. If you only learn your French vocabulary from school textbooks and classic novels, you won't be able to understand what people actually say in the streets of Paris, Lyon or Marseille. So if you want to understand a real conversation or a modern TV show, you will need to stop learning only correct French words and concentrate on more informal vocabulary. Let's practice that together right now. Here are some simple informal words from everyday French vocabulary. Can you tell me what each of them means? Let's review them together. And if you want to dive deeper into each point of today's lesson, you can click on the link in the description to find the blog post for this lesson. This is where you will find the full written transcript of this lesson with all the translations and explanations you need, as well as more insights and resources more examples, and everything that didn't fit exactly in the video lesson. And it's all free and available right now. You only have to click on the link in the video description. Okay, now let's find out what these words mean. Je suis crevé means je suis très fatigué. Je suis fatigué as well works. It means I'm exhausted, I'm really tired. Je suis très fatigué. Crevé means burst, and it's informal slang for dead. So, je suis crevé is I am dead tired. We could also say je suis épuisé. Je suis épuisé. But that's a bit more formal. People sometimes use it, but it would be a better fit in a novel or a more elegant situation than modern everyday spoken French. Je suis crevé, on y va? <laughs> Je me casse, je me casse, je me casse is an informal expression for je m'en vais or je pars, which means I'm leaving. Je m'en vais or je pars means I am leaving. Je me casse literally means I am breaking myself. Literally, I am breaking myself. Tu t'excuses et tu te casses. <laughs> And le taf, le taf is informal French for le travail, which is work le travail, or even le métier, le métier, which is work or a job, or la profession, la profession, for the profession, if you want to sound more professional. In casual everyday French, we also use le boulot, le boulot, le boulot. Le taf is a bit more informal still. C'est ouf, c'est ouf, means c'est fou, c'est fou, that's crazy, or for instance, Incroyable, incredible, incroyable. Ouf, ouf is actually something that we call verlan, verlan. This is a type of informal French that we make by switching around the letters in the word. That's how fou for crazy becomes ouf, ouf. Fou becomes ouf. Finally, je kiffe, je kiffe means j'aime or j'adore. J'aime or j'adore. I love something. Do you understand them now? Je suis crevé means I'm tired. Je me casse, I'm leaving. Le taf is work. C'est ouf, that's crazy. And je kiffe is I am enjoying it. The verb kiffer, kiffer means to like or to enjoy and it became a typical word for the millennial generation. Obviously, we wouldn't use it in a job interview or anything formal and you might not see that in a school textbook. And yet, it is a very common word amongst friends. However, kiffe is strictly for informal spoken French. Hearing it in a formal business setting or reading it in a book can be a bit jarring. It can be a signal they're trying too hard to sound like younger people. How do you do, fellow kids? What? On the other hand, you shouldn't use la profession, la profession, when you should be using le taf. 
Because profession is a more formal administrative word and many would find it weird to hear it in an informal discussion. In between this situation, there is an interplay of written French and everyday spoken French, where we mix and match our familiarity depending on the situation and what we like. And it is fun to be confident in both languages and sometimes surprising or even funny. But the point is that if you want to watch modern French shows and have a normal conversation with French friends or anything else in French, well, you have to learn this whole new language of everyday spoken French. You don't need to learn one more verb or perfect your passé simple or read one more classic novel in French or even buy one more textbook. If you want to speak French with confidence and with fluency, this is not going to help you and it will even slow you down. Reading French and understanding spoken French are two widely different things. And it is especially the case with pronunciation. Really, the main difference between written French and spoken French is that one of them is spoken. So you have to account for pronunciation. Let's take a sentence like Il faut que tu achètes du pain. You need to buy some bread. Il faut que tu achètes du pain. That's how I read it. This is how we would pronounce it correctly in a French lesson. And this is even how it would be written on the French subtitles of a TV show. But in everyday life, we would never say that. We would say instead, faut que t'achètes du pain. Faut que t'achètes du pain. Faut que t'achètes du pain. We got rid of the il and of a bunch of vowels in the middle. Just like that. I know it is frustrating because correct French pronunciation already has a bunch of rules and exceptions. Like silent letters and so many more. And in everyday spoken French, we're changing this pronunciation again. Just so we can speak faster. Ouais, ouais. Eh, hey, t'oublies pas le rendez-vous à la banque demain. Le prêt pour l'immeuble de Massy, les numéros pairs. T'en veux la moitié, tu fais la moitié du boulot. Quelle heure 11 heures. I know, it's horrible. Now, let's practice together once again. Here are four more sentences in written French. How do you think we would pronounce them in casual, fast spoken French? Let's review them together one by one. As usual, if there is anything else you would like to know more about, check out the blog post in the video description. You will find a lot more rules, lots of exceptions, etc. But for now, let's concentrate on the examples. Elle ne sera pas là demain. Elle ne sera pas là demain means she won't be here tomorrow. In correct French, we read Elle ne sera pas là demain. How would you say that sentence in real life? Try to guess and pronounce your answer right now before I give you the answer. Ready? Well, it could be Elle sera pas là demain. Elle sera pas là demain. Elle sera pas là demain. I know it's tricky. We can notice two things here. First, we almost always eat the ne in a negative sentence. That's not something that comes up in correct French grammar, but you really need to know things like that in order to understand everyday spoken French. I made a whole lesson on eating the ne, you'll find the link to it in the blog post for the lesson. The second thing is even more common and you need to know it in order to understand what French people say. The weak, unstressed E uh, sound get skipped a lot in French. Here, for instance, we have this weak E uh, sound in the middle of words. Sera gets pronounced sera, sera, sera. We cut the E uh in the middle. Demain for tomorrow is said demain, demain, demain. Again, we don't say the E uh in the middle. That's not mandatory though, depending on the person and the situation. And I, I like to say even the weather, you could very well hear Elle sera pas là demain. Elle sera pas là demain. Or even elle sera pas là demain. Elle sera pas là demain. And you can even have other combinations as well. The rules of everyday spoken French are very much guidelines. Sometimes we're more comfortable keeping vowels and cutting others. It really depends again on the person and the situation. Now let's go to the next examples. 
Don't worry, it won't be as long. So, il n'y a pas de problème. Il n'y a pas de problème. There is no problem, literally. You will hear people use it to say, okay, no problem, don't worry. What would be the fast spoken French pronunciation of that sentence? Again, try to pronounce your guess out loud before I give you the answer. Did you guess? In real life, it often sounds like y'a pas de problème. Y'a pas de problème. Y'a pas de problème. Pas de problème. Once again, we cut the ne and we cut the weak e here in de. And you can notice that the construction of il y a or il n'y a pas gets shortened into ya or ya pas. This is one of the rules of everyday spoken French. Our next example is a bit more complex. Je suis sûr que tu y arriveras. Je suis sûr que tu y arriveras. It means I am sure you'll manage, I am sure you will succeed. How would you shorten this sentence to make it sound more natural in France? Take a minute, you can pause the video if you want, okay? Did you guess? Mm -hmm. My answer is, je suis sûr que tu arriveras. Je suis sûr que tu arriveras. Je suis sûr que tu arriveras. Mm -hmm. Hard, isn't it? Several things happened here. First, we cut the U in tu before a vowel. That's very common. Tu y arriveras becomes ti arrivera. Ti arrivera. Ti arrivera. Also, we cut the weak E in je and que. Je suis sûr que ti arrivera becomes je suis sûr que ti arrivera. Je suis sûr que ti arrivera. Even for me, it's difficult because it's so natural. Explaining it takes some brain for me to do. Je suis sûr que tu y arriveras becomes je suis sûr que tu y arriveras. Je suis sûr que tu y arriveras. Mm -hmm. And finally, that first syllable, je suis, is a bit hard to pronounce. Je suis, je suis, je suis. So, it gets pronounced as shui, shui, shui. And it's the same thing with je sais and je sais pas. I don't know or I know. And it sounds like che or je sais pas. Che or je sais pas for I don't know. Ah, oh, non, tu crois pas, je sais pas, tu crois? And again, je suis sûr que tu arriveras is my maximum answer. Je suis sûr que tu arriveras. In real life, we often mix and match how much we want to shorten our words. So you could also hear, je suis sûr que tu arriveras, or je suis sûr que tu y arriveras. All these work. Finally, our last example of this section. Je prends le train de l'après-midi. Je prends le train de l'après-midi. I am taking the afternoon train. How would I pronounce this in real life and not in a French lesson? Guess out loud, but this time there is a catch. It's something I mentioned in one of my previous videos. Did you guess? It is, je prends le train de l'après-midi. Je prends le train de l'après-midi. Mm -hmm. Here we cut the week uh, in, je, le, n, de. But more importantly, we cut the word après-midi for afternoon in a more simple l'aprem, l'aprem. It's not really slang, but it is an everyday informal word. Sometimes cutting letters create new vocabulary for informal French, and this may not appear in textbooks or dictionaries. Now, for you, cutting letters and speaking faster is a difficulty. But on the bright side, spoken French is much easier on one thing, which is Grammar. The grammar of everyday spoken French is often a simplified version of the grammar you learned at school. For example, as we've seen, negative sentences don't need the ne in everyday spoken French. You only need to add pas after the verb. Instead of saying the formal elle ne sait pas, for she doesn't know. Elle ne sait pas, we simply say, elle sait pas. Elle sait pas. Because really, cutting the ne in a sentence isn't just about speaking faster, but also a matter of simplified grammar. Similarly, poser une question, asking a question, poser une question gets much simpler in everyday spoken French. 
Instead of saying, for instance, dors-tu, dors-tu, or est-ce que tu dors, est-ce que tu dors, are you sleeping, in the way that you probably learned at school in your textbooks, we simply ask, tu dors, tu dors, with the voice going up, we use the affirmative sentence, tu dors, tu dors, for you sleep, or you are sleeping, and we just add a question mark at the end. Or for another more striking example, here is a very formal sentence. Alors nous voulûmes danser. Then we wanted to dance. Alors nous voulûmes danser. You will never hear this sentence in the wild. It is way too formal for two reasons. The main reason is that the verb vouloir, vouloir for to want here is in le passé simple. This tense is something that you can spend a lot of time learning but that no one uses now. The passé simple used to be very common in novel and formal speeches. But even there, it's basically disappeared. Instead, we use le passé composé, le passé composé. You will find more about these conjugations in the blog post for today's lesson, by the way. The second reason is that in modern everyday spoken French, we almost never use the subject nous. Instead, in order to say we for a group, we are going to use on that has a shorter conjugation of the third person of the singular. In other words, instead of saying alors nous voulûmes danser, we would almost always say alors on a voulu danser. Alors on a voulu danser. Here we find the on that is the informal we oui in French that is in the singular form and a voulu that is the passé composé of the verb vouloir which means then we wanted to dance. It is the same meaning but it is modern everyday spoken French. You will find more examples of simplified spoken French grammar in the blog post for today's lesson. But what you can notice here once again is the risk of spending a lot of time learning formal French in old 1960s textbooks. This is a very, very classic example. If you want to understand a modern spoken French, all these efforts could be a waste of time. The only way to reach your goal is to concentrate on real spoken French and spoken comprehension. There is a ton of different angles to learning and practicing everyday spoken French. If you don't have a group of French friends around, you can pay extra attention to the actual grammar and pronunciation of your favorite recent French TV show, for example. If you really love books, you can also find novels that use modern everyday spoken French, even though it is on a written page. For example, Virginie Grimaldi is a very popular French novelist which has lots of this kind of French in her novels and lots of other novels which are set in the 21st century with modern spoken French in them. And of course, I have whole courses dedicated to help you understand modern spoken French. With Spoken French Essentials, I walk you through the spoken French foundations that every French learner needs, no matter how long you've been studying French. It's a great program to learn the tools for better French conversation and pronunciation, master the essentials of French conversation, and soon become more confident speaking French. On the other hand, I will have my course French Vocabulary and Pronunciation is all about the French vocabulary of modern spoken French and the pronunciation of it. So it's the next step after spoken French essential, but it is fantastic for you if you want to really go deep into this aspect of French. And at last, on a totally different level, I recommend that you try to listen to some French podcasts. You will find a lot of suggestions in the blog post for today's lesson. You can get that list of recommendations right now or you can keep exploring modern everyday French with me and how to understand fast spoken French. Click on your screen right here to keep learning with me. I will see you in the next video. Allez, à tout de suite.